Hey guys, this is MJ. Welcome to the Rustic Maple Design family. Today, we are going to be making a salt painted Lazy Susan turd table. I've never used salt wash before, so this is kind of cool. We're going to apply it to this board and we're gonna make a turntable out of it, a Lazy Susan turntable, which will be fun. Uh, the table or the wood itself you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Now I'm gonna use all kinds of paints. So I'm gonna use Annie Sloan's. So we got chalk paint. I've got a few different colors of them. I've got the General Finishes milk paint. Um, what I'm going for is a lot of colors. So I'm gonna use everything I've got pretty much. I've got some Dixie Bell chalk paint. And then I've got some Modern Masters. It's their front door paint that I'm gonna use along with some Valspar paint. And the Valspar I just got at, at Lowe's. So you can get that and just kind of mix it yourself. But the front door um, paint is from Modern Masters. So we're basically going to put the paint into these cups. Uh, we're gonna use stir sticks. And then I'm gonna basically have got my chip brushes. Uh, we're gonna be dropping it with the stir sticks at first and I'll just kind of show you in the video and again This is my first time ever using salt paint So you're gonna learn pros and cons with me and I'm just gonna learn and just kind of have fun because I've always wanted to work with salt paint so I'm going to start putting everything into uh, Individual cups and we're gonna fast forward it for you and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt paint or salt to every bit of the paint cups. And I'm just gonna do the consistency that I want. So I want it to be able to drop on the board so that's the consistency I'm going to use. You can use whatever you want and do it however you want. The, the thicker you want or the thinner, it really depends on your project. So I'm separating, I've got my chalk paints on one side, my Modern Masters on the other, the milk paint separate. So I'm trying to keep them a little bit separate because I kind of want to see how they do with the salt paint as we're doing the job. You don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do. Now we're working today with 10 colors. So let's get ready to just have some fun. We're going to get a little bit of modern art in here, which I'm not big into, but this is kind of cool. I really had a lot of fun doing this. So again, just try these colors out and see what we're going to do. We're just going to mix them all right now, mixing them up, and then I'm going to be adding the salt to each one of them, each individual one, and let's just get to it. All right, we've got all of them mixed up. We're gonna take the plastic off this board and get started. Again, I'm gonna try to keep my paint colors separate. I wanna do my chalks in one and I wanna do my milk paint separate and then the uh, Modern Masters uh, front door paint separate because I just wanna see how it works. So we're gonna just put it on this board and I wanna do a lot of colors, you don't have to. You can choose whatever you want. I decided to get a lot of my bright colors out. I have 10 of them and that's what we're gonna work with today. So I've already pre-mixed all the cups on the amounts I wanna use. I'm gonna use this board and I'm gonna set that underneath because that way as we're doing the top and the edges, I'm gonna let the paint just kind of drip off the edges and that'll give me room instead of it being all over the table and getting pretty messy. So again, separating the colors out and we're just gonna start plopping these babies on here and it's just totally random. Just do it how you want. I just wanted pops of color all over. So I'm just throwing each color kind of everywhere I want and we're just gonna see what happens because again, first time with salt paint, it's gonna be kind of fun. I've been excited. Okay, now I'm going back with some of my leftover paint because I need to fill it. So I don't want any wood showing at all. So I'm just filling in with all my leftover paint until there isn't any wood showing. Just completely random. Now for me, I found there is still some wood, so I ran out of paint. <laughs> Again, this is my first time doing this. So I'm gonna grab a blow dryer and I'm gonna spread that paint around. You do not have to do this. This is only because I didn't have enough paint. So this is gonna work it out and just spread it everywhere along the sides, along the top. And I don't want any wood showing because I want this to dry and we're gonna sand it down after a bit. Okay, I'm gonna start going around the edges and I'm just gonna fill in on the edges too. A lot of that paint's kind of dripped over the edge, which is what I wanted. And so you're just gently, try not to mix the colors too much if you can help it. If you do, that's fine. But just try to keep like the yellow, yellow, the red, red, that type of thing 
all the way through and get all the edges done. And then kind of put your finger on the bottom side too and get any excess that's there if you can. It's gonna drip and that's okay. We're gonna sand it off later. And that's pretty much it. Wow, is this ever colorful? Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm just gonna plop any excess that I have. Just fill in wherever I can, because why waste the paint? I'm gonna throw it away, right? All right, it is dry. It actually took three days to dry, people, because it was so thick. So make sure it's dry, completely dry. No wet paint anywhere, it's not soft, totally dry. Now, it's very, very colorful. So we are going to tame this baby down, but look at all that color. Look at those sides, that's so cool. This is pretty fun, I like this. I haven't done this colorful of a thing in quite some time, so it's kind of exciting. Look at all that texture. One thing I noticed too, if you look at the red, the red is the milk paint. I don't think I'm ever gonna use milk paint again with salt because look at how that cracked. I'll kind of show you close-ups later on, but it, it cracked on the milk paint and it'll look cool. It'll still be crackled, but I wasn't going for that. So um, I probably won't do that. But let's do, I'm gonna do the old white in the Annie Sloan because I wanna tame this down. It's a bit too colorful for me. So we're gonna just put the chalk paint everywhere. Cover the entire thing. And you kinda wanna take your brush and pat it in there too because later on we're going to use that scraper and just kind of scrape off the excess paint. But you wanna kind of push it into some of the places so that it gets into the crevices. Because when you do this project yourself, you'll understand what I mean. It's hard to show that texture, but boy, there's a lot of texture in this baby. All right, I'm just using an old chip brush because I don't care about a chip brush because it's gonna kind of be, you know, getting into this rough stuff. So just use that put it everywhere and like I said push it into places too don't be afraid to push it into it because we're gonna be sanding this off you can go any direction in fact it's better to go all directions okay now you can kind of see the texture a little bit more now that I'm you know got some of the white on there I mean there's a lot of texture going on you need to go around the sides to do the exact same thing and make sure that when you're doing this it's kind of a rounded board, so get the top tip and the bottom tip, and then go around the edges and make sure there's not a lot of dripping going on. We're gonna wait for that to dry. Okay, we're dry, folks. Uh, we're getting ready to sand. Now, like I said, again, this is my first time using salt paint, so it's so thick, I'm going to move to this handy dandy pretty scraper instead of the smaller scraper that I had because it just wasn't strong enough. You can see my little red chip on there that I tried. <laughs> I was like, huh, I don't think so. Then when I'm done getting most of it off, I'm gonna use 60 grit with my DeWalt sander. And 60 grit is a little bit more tough, but when you see the texture on this, you'll understand. And when you do this, you definitely want to make sure that you've got a mask on, because this is really messy. So let's start scraping. Just get as much excess of you, as you can until you sand it with the sander. It takes a little bit of elbow grease. Okay, I got quite a bit of the high stuff, so now I'm putting on my mask, and let's get start sanding. This is the fun part, because this is where it kind of comes to life, I think. So just enjoy the process. Make sure you're doing this outdoors, too, because like I said, it's totally messy. So outside is the smartest way to go. And if you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up, and we'd love for you to subscribe. We're going to be having, I want to do more salt paint projects in the future so you can look for those and then when I'm done with this turntable we're going to put it on our Etsy shop which is rustic maple design that's the name of our Etsy shop so you're welcome to go there and check this out if you like the project when it's done look at all those colors now again you don't have to choose all the colors I chose I just decided and they'll all be in the link below I just decided I wanted to go all out and just make this really colorful. And you can tame it down with the white. So don't, you, if you don't want to, that's fine. If you want all this color, go for it. But I like to have it a little bit more tamed down. This sandy takes the longest. So just kind of go with it until it's fairly smooth. It's not gonna be super smooth because of all the texture. Just kind of sand it down. Get it kind of level because we do want to have food on this.
Okay, I'm just feeling around to see if there's any high spots that I might have missed. Because again, very, very textured. So just check it out. And you can use a sander again if you decide that there's some spots that you might have missed. I didn't like on that red milk paint I told you about, a couple pieces chipped out. Not happy about that. So there's a couple semi-bald spots, which I'm going to fill in with paint and um, poly. But again, for me, I'm not going to use milk paint when I use uh, salt paint anymore. Let's get those edges going. Gently just start sanding away till you get to the color that you want. I'm going to do just along the edges some because I want to have some of the wood showing through. You do not have to do this. I want to. I want to have some of the wood showing. So I'm going along, sanding it, but I'm also getting those edges a little bit with the sander. Now I want to use more of the Annie Sloan because I, I like the colors, but I want it more tamed down. So I'm going to clean it off a little bit first. See what I have to work with. Look at all those colors, oh my gosh. This is really pretty. I wish I could show you more up close. It's kind of hard with the video, but it's so cool. Clean up your workspace, and I'm gonna go for another coat of the um, old white. See how the edges have a bit more white on it? I like that look more. So I'm gonna go more for that. We're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just covering the entire thing because we're gonna sand it again. Now this project is not a, let's get it done in a day or two project. It's gonna take you a few days. So just kinda have this one set aside. Take your time and just enjoy it. Don't rush. Make sure you get it all dry. All right, put the board underneath. I'm gonna do my edges. Make sure you check for drips underneath. You don't want a bunch of drips. You're just covering it all. All right, this baby's gonna dry. We're gonna come back and we're gonna sand it again. Okay, now we're back. This is the 100 grit sandpaper. So um, before we use 60, we're going to 100 grit because I don't want it to be as intense. It's pretty much smooth to where I want it. Right now, I just want colors coming out. So use the 100 grit. We're gonna get some of that old white off that we painted around it. And this is where you wanna decide how much color do I want? How little color do I want? And you can always, if you don't like the way that I did it, you can always go back and add more white and just kind of feel it how you want. I went to a certain point where it looked good to me and I wanted some of those colors poking through and just to see the beauty of it, but to have a lot of the white to tame it down. I think this looks pretty cool. Remember too, I sanded the edges as well. So you'll see that as we're working. And again, it's hard to show, but I'm gonna to try to show you. There is so much texture. It's kind of like a stone almost. It's so cool. So I've got the edges kind of exposed here and there, and we're gonna stay in that, and you'll see that in a little bit. But basically, I've left a lot of the color on the edges too, so it's just some places of, of the wood here and there along those edges. And look at that color. So let's get the edges done. Don't forget while doing this, you are wearing a mask because it is very, very messy. Let's clean this off. Let's see all those beautiful colors. Oh my gosh. This has ended up being quite a fun project for me. I really like this, this is cool. Just look at all those. So there's texture, there's, if you look really close, that salt paint has these, um, it puts spots in the paint, so it makes them look kind of aged. It's really cool. It's like porous, I guess as you'd say, like a stone. There's a lot of porous parts to it. And then the red, I do like that it crackled because that makes it a little different. The rest of it didn't crackle. But I, again, I don't think I'd use the milk paint because part of it came off on that upper part, so I didn't like that. So we're gonna come back. And again, you can add more paint to it if you want to. I like this color, so I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with what I have. This is kind of the look I was going for. But if you want to put more to tame it down, you go for it and keep doing the same thing we're doing. And then look at all the color. This is pretty cool. And I'm thinking of putting handles on. So 
I guess you'll have to go to my Etsy shop at Rustic Maple Design, see if I ended up putting handles on it or not. It's all dry, ready to go. We're gonna get ready to do, we've got, everything that I'm using is water-based. So right now I'm using a color wash from Minwash. It's kind of fun, it's this barnwood brown. And again, everything that I use are, will be in the links below. I'm going to do the edging of the board with this barnwood. And then I'm also gonna do the back base with the barnwood because I love the grain of the wood. Isn't that pretty? You use this barnwood, oh, it's gonna be so much fun. So we're gonna sand off. If you can see the edges, before I put that barn, barnwood stain on there in the polycrylic water-based, everything's water-based. Before I put that on, we're gonna go around the edges and get that excess paint off and just sand that down. Now I'm going across the board and I'm going with the grain of the wood. So just basically I'm just sanding it down so it's nice and smooth before we put the stain on it and then before we put the top coat. Wipe it all clean, get it prepped and ready. I'm gonna put the board down and I'm putting a cloth down because I haven't polyed the top yet of the um, painted side so I wanna keep it protected. So just put a board down while we're working on all of this because we're gonna kinda flip it on both sides. I love using an old pencil. I don't know if any of you do this. You can put it in the comments below. I use an old pencil for paint, stain, whatever. It's awesome. I use an old sock, which I love, and I use that for putting on poly or putting on stain. Right now, we're just gonna do the stain. Just gonna put it along the edges. Now, I just usually take my sock, but you can take a paper towel or whatever, and wipe that pencil off, and boom, you're done. You get to use that pencil over and over again. It's awesome. No cleaning required. Okay, I'm gonna go along the edges and put the stain on, and I noticed when I rubbed that first when it got on some of the paint, so I'm gonna go back and sand that off. So I just decided I'm gonna just rub the stain on the open parts where there's exposed wood, and then I'm gonna go back with my sander and gently sand some of it off. Again, remember, this is my first time doing this type of project, so you kind of live and learn as you go along. All right, let's put this barnwood on here. It's so cool. Look at all that. I love how this brings the character of the wood out. I love staining things. It's like it just brings it to life. Just put it around. Make sure you don't have any drips around the edges. I mean, look at that. Is that wood grain not beautiful? Oh, I love that. You could leave this without any stain if you wanted to, but I like to complete a project. I like it to look pretty on both sides. Even the side that you probably never see. I just think that's just the way I roll. Is that not pretty? I love that. All right, and then on this, I'm going to do, use the color wash again, and we're just gonna do the second coat. And I'm still using the 100 grit, so I do not go back to the 60. We're sticking with the 100, and we're just gonna use that because that's more delicate. So I'm sanding the edges, and I'm getting some of that stain off, and then that little bit of stain that I got on the paint that I didn't like, I'm getting that off too. And before I apply the second coat, I always like to lightly sand the stain for the first time. It just makes it look a lot better. So right now I'm just gonna do this paint side. We're gonna put the water-based polycrylic on it. I'm using a satin and I'm using a sponge. I think the reason why I chose a sponge, you could use a brush if you want. I chose a sponge because I think it will get into the crevices a little bit better at first because there's a lot of texture going on here. And again, I'm sorry because it's hard. You can't really see it as well. But there's a lot there, so I want to get into those crevices. So just pour some of it on top and just roll it all over in all different directions. And get those sides and don't let it drip. Make sure you get the edges so you're not dripping. And that's done. So we're going to do three coats on the paint side, which is awesome. Okay, we're dry. We're going to do this again. So we've got... The clear coat again, what I said I like to do is I like to take either 400 or 600 grit uh, sandpaper. And you gently, and I mean gently, you just basically, you just want to have a light scrape because you're getting any of the little, making it a little bit softer, making it a little bit smoother. So just go straight across, straight across, straight across, light. Don't put a lot of weight on it. Have your hand flat. You can do it one or two times, that's enough. Straight across. And that baby's going to be smooth.
Now, I like to, when I'm just setting aside, I put my rollers in a Walmart bag just to keep it moist if I'm gonna be doing the project the same day. Another coat of polyacrylic. Again, everything's water-based. You wanna stick with water-based if that's what you're working with. All right, that's the second coat. We're gonna do three. Okay, it's dry now, so it's looking pretty good. I like the way that it looks. Um, I've done two coats of the polyacrylic, and this is in the uh, satin. And so I'm gonna flip it over and get my barn wood side going too. Now, I didn't like how dark it looked, so I got out, same stuff, color wash, but it's a white wash, and it's the same Minwax, and it's all water-based. So I am going to use my same sock. So I use the same sock for the entire thing. Just use different parts of the sock. That way you're not wasting a bunch of rags. I am going to do some of that whitewash and tone that wood down because I want it to match more. It's a little bit too drastic for me. It's too much dark brown versus the white. So there's too much of a contrast. So I want to kind of tie it together and this whitewash will help do that. I'm just applying it. Now, if you can see, there's a light white uh, shimmer on there. And again, I'm so sorry, but it's hard to see. I wish you could see a little bit better. Um, I ended up, this is dry now. I did do the whitewash, and I did start with the barn wood. So the barn wood, again, too dark. Going with the whitewash to help lighten it up a little bit. And you don't have to. I just felt it kind of needed it a little bit more. Um, I wanted it to have more white on it. And that's kind of what it looks like dry. If you can kind of see the white tones within the wood itself. And that just kind of lightened it up a little bit. And then again, I did the polyacrylic on that side too. One thing I decided to, I was doing the satin and to me it's too shiny. So I'm gonna switch to the clear matte to finish. I'm gonna actually end up doing, I believe six coats by the time I'm done. <laughs> Uh, again, food's going to be on here, so I want to make sure it's coated really well. Just use that same sock. Just pouring it all over. And this matte is going to tone it down because it's too shiny for me. I don't like the real shiny stuff. If you do, great. Stick with it. I want it to be more matte. And I'm going to do two more of the matte coats, but I have to let it dry. Okay, so I did that behind camera. I did the three coats. One thing I didn't like is I want this barn wood to be a little bit more white, so I'm going to do another coat of the whitewash. So now we are ready to put on the hardware. We are almost done. We're at the end gate. Okay, see how that whitewash helped? It's got a lot more flex of the white throughout, which ties it in better. It makes it look better. And look at those colors, I love it. I love how this turned out, it's so much fun. Now we're gonna put the um, turntable hardware on it because I did the six coats. I did do six coats of poly, which you do not have to. They do say three to five is good if you're intending on putting food on something or drink, something that would have water, that type of thing. So it's definitely protected. This thing's good. And it's smooth, but it's got a little bit of, I don't know, it's still got that texture going on it. So this is the hardware, I got this off Amazon. It's six inch. Um, you can do it different ways. It didn't come with screws. How crazy is that? I think sometimes companies get so cheap. Ugh. Find some screws that aren't too deep. You don't want to go as deep as the wood. And then you want to make sure that the head of the screw, put it through the hole. Make sure that the mechanism can still slide back and forth. The head doesn't get in the way because sometimes you have some bulky heads on the screws. So make sure it goes past it. I'm clear. So these are good screws. They're not too thick. They're not going to screw through the wood and the head's clear. So on the back, you can, the easiest way that I saw and I didn't have it, is you can draw around a piece of paper, fold it over and fold it over again and find that middle center and that can be your template. And that's probably the smartest way to go, but I didn't have the paper that big. So I decided tape measure. So I got my trusty tape measure. Uh, I marked it with a marker and I have four holes that I have ready to put that turntable on. So I'm just marking up my holes that I already have there, lining it up, pretty much there. And now comes the easy part. We're just basically gonna put the screws in. This is it, we are done, we're down to the end. Watch this baby go. Yes, oh my gosh. 
That's pretty cool. Okay, I love this. Lots of color. And you know what? And like I said, I may put handles. I may not. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. But we're going to have it at our Etsy shop at Rustic Maple Design. So please go and look at it. But just try this. Have some fun. Don't be scared of it. Um, if you look at all those beautiful colors, and it, like I said, it's so porous. It's kind of like, it's like a stone. Literally like a stone. And the mechanism's super easy. And then I'm going to put silicone legs on the bottom of that mechanism and that way when you have it on a table it doesn't scooch all over the place it'll just kind of keep it keep it stuck in place which is great but you've got the crackle of the red which is cool you've got all these different colors rotates how much fun is that your kids are gonna have a blast with this thing it's a lot of fun and like i said for me this was my first salt project love it